And we are live. Guys, what's up? Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast, man. We got a special guest in the house. Jason, Jason fucking Capital, Capital, baby. Let's get into it. Let's go. What up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast. We're here with Jason Capital, guys. Quick announcement before we get into the show, man. Patreon.com slash Fresh Fit. Go ahead and get all the behind-the-scenes exclusive content there. Guys, we're going to be doing a Zoom call tonight after the call-in show, okay? So we're going to do our interview with Jason. He's in town. We had to get him in. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to do a call-in show at, right after this. And then we're going to do a Zoom call with all you guys. To make up for last month, we're going to go ahead and do it for y'all at the 20 tier, man. So get on Patreon.com slash Fresh Fit right now. Get in there, and we're going to have that Zoom call. We're going to send out the link after the second show. So check us out over there, okay? Also, guys, we're going to be posting more on Anchor. Shout out to Chris uh, for letting me know. We're going to be posting, what, three, uh, probably five times a week now, Chris? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, some back-end crap with Anchor because they're, they're trash. But we're back on there now. We're going to be posting more consistently. So go ahead and click the link below, guys, um, and check us out because it could take you to whatever destination you like to listen to us on, whether it's um, Spotify, Google, App Podcast, CastBox. Regardless of the platform, we we're got y'all with the audio because I know some of you guys like to listen to us as you drive. Um, also, Check us out on FreshFitPodcastStore.com. Guys, get the merch. Get the T-shirts, hoodies, sweaters, all the stuff that Fresh never wears, basically. And check us out over there, FreshFitPodcastStore.com, baby. And then also, guys, check out the other YouTube channel, Fresh Fit Clips. Guys, this channel, like 77% of the people that watch Are this goddamn sub, channel man. not sub, bro. I was looking at the numbers this morning. What's wrong with y'all, Subscribe man? to the fucking channel, goddammit. And like the video. And, uh, bro. Yeah. And you want to tell them about that? At least you could do, bro. Come yes, on. At least you could do, man. This is free content, it's free man. content Come on, bro. bro. We got uh, and also, guys, um, check us out. If your attention span is even shorter, check us out on Fresh It Fit Shorts, okay? As you guys know, we've been off TikTok like eight <laughs> times at this point. So go ahead and check out our Shorts channel where we make videos that are 60 seconds or less for all you guys out there that have a low attention span. And then, Fresh, you want to tell real quick about your... Guys, for behind the scenes, man, check out the vlog channel. We do lifestyle videos. We do live streams as well. And behind the scenes for, you know, get to know us better one-on-one. So, guys, check out the vlog channel. Music gang, we're up. 100k on the way. Let's go. And for a different perspective, guys, check out my other YouTube channel, Feta1811, on there. I break down criminal cases for you guys. I break down celebrity cases, whether it's, you know, Pusha, Ice, D, Wine, W, Melly, or whatever. And I also break down, you know, big cases like the Glenn Maxwell case, the Epstein case. Or I break down some cases that I did myself. Uh, I covered a case uh, last week where, you know, we arrested a border patrol agent that was trying to meet up with a minor. And, you know, walked Whoa. through the store with y'all. It was the closest I ever came to shooting somebody. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the back in the day. But check us out over there, guys, on uh, Fed at 1811, if you guys like that type of crime narrative. And uh, yeah, seeing how it works from the perspective of former Fed. But anyway, without further ado, we got Jason Capital in the house. Welcome, brother. Legendary marketer. Uh, been in the space for a very long time. We know who you are, man. We're happy to have you. Can you introduce yourself to the people for those that may not know? Yep, sure, man. Uh, so my name is Jason Capital. I train marketers. I uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so t tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Like, uh, but honestly, man, oh, I've seen this guy from way back in the day. Yeah. Grinding. OG. Adding value nonstop. And for you to still be in the industry on some level is legendary because most guys phase out. They, oh, you know what? I'm out of it. I can't keep up with it with the times and they just get out. You've still been in the game giving value. That's that, that's dope. Crazy. And if you and if our boy are unplugged, you know, my yep. boy would watch trading. Shout out, so. to, shout out to our unplugged. You guys have seen him on the show uh, many yep. times, the luxury watch dealer. Yep. Uh, he helps uh, Fresh also procure his jewelry. <laughs> yeah, he's he's jewelry. Yes, sir. You got yes, a new little thing? Yeah, a new we'll edition Fresh? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you know, like, what I think is unique about me, I don't want to brag or anything. Do it, man. I'm, I'm just going to be out. Like, I've, so I've started five, seven or eight figure businesses in five different industries in uh, 12 years. So, Damn. like, it's one thing, I think, being able to go into an industry where you know the avatar, you know the market, and you can market to that crowd, but to do it in niche after niche after niche after niche, it's, that's about marketing, you know, and that's, I don't think I'm necessarily the best in the world at it, but it's the thing I love the most. It's what I talk about. It's what I think about. It's my favorite thing in the world. And so it started ironically because I was a dating coach for a while and, uh, the dating game that I taught was based on marketing. 
Mm. The same way that I do marketing now, it's the same thing as seduction. It's literally yeah. not different. Yep. It's funny. We applied business strategies to dating and it works wonders. So question for you just real quick. I know we'll get into like your childhood and growing up. Yeah. In your opinion, is marketing one of the most important factors for businesses? I think it's the most important skill mm. in the beginning. Uh, I think if you're a Fortune 500 company and you got HR and you got, you're a publicly traded, like that's a whole different ballgame. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a small business. You're talking about someone who just wants to get started right now. Uh, marketing is, I think, the most important skill and the first skill. Because when you are a marketer and you're good at marketing, you make people come to you. Facts. Yeah. And if you're dating and you make women come to you. You win the game. You win. And the same thing in business. So I think that skill is a, it's a fucking superpower. Yeah. Instagram, absolutely. guys. Yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> yep. Get on the wait list, motherfuckers. Link below. Uh, so um, so you said you had scaled up uh, five different businesses. Can you tell in different niches? Can you tell people real quick what those businesses yeah, were? Yeah, so it started with basketball. Yep. And then dating. And then personal development. Uh, and then social media. Mm -hmm. And then copywriting. Bam. And we're gonna and we're gonna get it to each of those guys, but before that, can you take us down memory lane of where Jason Capital started? Oh shoot, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that music. <laughs> Wonderland. Yeah, this is badass. I uh, yeah, man. So I uh, I growing up, I was uh, I was cut from the eighth grade basketball team. That mm -hmm. was like where my Batman story started. Uh, Where'd you grow up originally? Uh, West Bloomfield, Michigan. Okay, so cool. about thirty minutes outside of Detroit. Mm. And uh, eighth grade, all my friends we go out for the team. You know, the coach posts the list on the thing. Name, name, name. My name's not on the list. All my friends are. I'm not. It wow. was like a heartbreaking moment for Swiss me. Feeling, man. I was a very sensitive 13 year old. And so I run home and I'm crying and I set this goal. Like I'm gonna play college basketball, which is retarded because I'm four foot 10. I'm white. I'm slow. I can't jump. And I just got cut from the team. Yeah. Right. So I don't have really good odds. I spend the next five years obsessed with basketball. I train eight hours a day. Uh, I get better and better and better. And eventually I get recruited to play college basketball at a D2 school okay. in St. Pete, uh, okay. Florida called Eckerd College. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I get there within the first semester. I'm like, I hate basketball. Mm, Damn. Like I realized it wasn't about playing college basketball. It was about proving people wrong. There you go. And that was what I wanted. And so once I made it, I was like, well, I'm not really interested in this anymore. Yeah. So I transferred back to Michigan State University where all my friends are. Mm. And I'm a virgin. So I'm 20 years old. I'm a virgin. I've never had a girlfriend. I've never kissed a girl. I spent all my time with Spalding. Right, mm, yep. not with uh with girls and the so balls. yeah, <laughs> I was good with balls. Yeah, <laughs> I got balls, man. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, I was like, I need to like figure this girl thing out, right? So I go to the first frat party with a couple of buddies of mine. And they walk in immediately. They know how to talk to the girls. They're like picking them up and spinning them around. And the girls are laughing. I talk to a girl, and after five seconds, she's like, "It was really nice to meet you. I'm gonna go find my friends." <laughs> <laughs> and just like with the basketball thing, I run back to my little apartment, and yeah. I'm like. I need to figure Master out this, this. this thing. Yeah. yeah. And so I read all the books. I went to all the seminars. I met all the fucking dating coaches, all the guys who were like in the book, the game. Like I met most of them. Yeah. Most of them are not good Did at you game read the in book, real life. Conquer by the way. Your campus? I, I know that book. Yeah. That's what I read when I went to college. Uh, Christian. I, I, was it Christian or someone named Mark Redman? I'm, I remember I read it, but basically it teaches, you know, the, all the, it's like, basic game book but specific for college college like yeah. and it's it talked about the importance of you know social hierarchies in college how it's more important than like other uh, you know venues i guess but sorry isn't yeah. it funny when you meet someone that just did some work sometimes right they're not as i want to say tied into the work as you think they would be as in like they can give you some advice but do they really apply it sometimes not really what, do you, what do you mean like it's like some dating coaches they'll give you advice but it don't actually do it, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. the problem is is a lot of people teaching it, and it's not just dating, it's basically anything. Mm -hmm. They're teaching from their memories, not from yesterday. Facts. Like, yep. I want to learn from the dude who did this last night. Yeah. that Because it, it changes, Yeah, you know? And that was, that was kind of the reason why I stopped doing dating coaching, because I got in a relationship. I'm just not going out anymore. I'm not interested, and that's fine. But I didn't feel right teaching it or selling that if I'm not mm. doing it. Right. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's in fair. the game. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and and you're 33. I'm 32. So we were we're kind of in that sweet spot where we're old enough to remember what life was like before social media. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're also young enough to like be on the cutting edge and like understand how social media works now and still being on it. Right. So what would you say are some of the biggest differences in dating and intersexual dynamics? I guess between like now versus like let's say 2010 before like the explosion of social media. Jesus. Uh. <laughs> Dude, Instagram changed everything. Yeah. It changed absolutely fucking everything. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the game used to be um, 
well, first it was like cold approach, yeah. right? Like pickup and shit like that. Yeah. But then that's how I started. And very Same. quickly, very quickly, I learned one, I'm wasting a ton of time talking to girls I'm not interested in. The other thing I didn't like about cold approach is like, I got good at day game. You know, mm -hmm. I went up and down Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica every afternoon for like a <laughs> year and a half. Like I, that, that's yeah. what I did. Yeah. Uh, and I got good at it, but I, I finally got this hot girl. I got her number. We meet for coffee and she's fucking boring. Yeah. And I'm like, I invested all this time and energy and fear of rejection to meet a girl I'm not even interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was like, I need a better way to qualify the prospects that I'm getting. Yeah. And that was when I started doing social circle. Okay. And now I have girls coming to me. This is the marketing thing. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but the girls who are coming are referrals from people that I already know, like, and trust. And so we have similar values. That's we wouldn't all be friends with each other if we weren't. And so it just got so much better after that. You know, I love that. I, I like uh, speaking my language, man. Uh, you, did you have some fresh? No, I just want to say, see, he went and did the actual act of cold approach. Yep. Found, found like, you know what? This is not for me, but it's it's a good place to start. Yeah. And then made his own avenue. So you know what? Are the attract than chase? Powerful. Yeah. And I'm and I was big on cold approach too. Like I've always said it. Like if if you're gonna get good with women, you it's a skill that you must learn. You can't get away from it. You you need to learn it because let's say you don't have the benefit of a social circle. You don't have the benefit of you know hot girls in your uh, immediate vicinity. You're gonna have to go out there and cold approach, man, and figure out the game that way. And uh, you know, and most guys meet girls through social circle, but it makes the social circle even better if you understand cold approach. And yeah, I think it's an important skill. Yeah, um, I think it's essential. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. like it it toughened me up for sure. Yeah. Uh, and you have, to, you have to be good on your toes in cold approach. Yeah. You got to have the quick one liners. You got to be good with banter. Uh, and if you're good at that, then talking to anyone at any time is like, it's makes not a big you deal. sharp as hell, man. Yeah. Like you're really on it. So, so you're doing a cold approach thing. When did you notice the shift? I guess because you said Instagram changed the game, which I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think that completely changed, flipped the game on its head because, uh, like, like you, I grew up watching mystery, you know, Neil Strauss. Yeah. I read the, I read the mystery method. I think it's a fantastic book, one of my favorites because. He actually identifies all the attraction triggers that women look for. Yes, it's a bit dated because he's using can openers and shit like that, but it's the the concept is fantastic. So for you, what would, I'm assuming you probably watched, read that book too, and mm -hmm. same thing multiple times. Yeah. When did you notice the transition? Um, hmm. I would say right around like 14, 15. Okay. 20, I, yeah. I saw things changing. Um, in terms of the mystery method, real quick, I I love that book. I think it's great. I think the issue with it is that the entire book is written from a, a supplicating frame, from a okay. frame of women are up here, okay. I am down here, and so I need to do things to make myself get up there. Mm. And I think it's more effective with the guy to just make him, I call it high status. I mean, that was my book, like make him high status. Uh, and so it's, it, you just come from, you come from a different frame. You come from, I have value to offer to people mm -hmm. and to women, as opposed to women have are above me i don't have value to offer to them and so i need to do all these things that necessarily aren't me in order to get her that's an interesting uh take on it yeah. man because i mean when you say it like that it, it is true but the book is written for you like it's basically for a guy no matter who you are what your social status is it's to understand and emulate certain behaviors yeah but you're saying no you just need to become that fucking guy versus yeah. like emulating the behaviors well, to, it's to me take. to me attraction with women is always it's about sub communications yep. like it doesn't matter what you say it matters how you say it and who is saying it so Thanks. i, I want to look at your <laughs> body language your vocal tonality your eye contact your energy and your general indifference i feel like those five things are the things that make guys attractive to women and so like I, you know, you're like, right. I agree. 100%. There's, there's fucking yeah. there's stories in that book. They tell this story and then make sure that when you mention it, there were girls with you. So you're pre-selected and yeah. then also mention that you were on a helicopter. So you seem high status. And you have access to scarce resources and it. adventures. Yeah. yeah. And like the dude, like, so I taught a lot of the shit online, right? Um, when I first got started, like teaching dating stuff online and I'd get like two types of testimonials. So I get one group of customers, dude, this shit worked. Thank you so much. The other group doesn't work at all. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is the difference? I'm not sure. And then I did my first seminar in, uh, in 15 in Vegas and we got 225 guys there and I meet some of these guys in person and I'm like, that's it. That's why this thing was going on. The guys who it's not working for, they're losers. Mm. Like, I don't even mean to be mean, like you facts, you sound like one, you look like one, yeah. you smell like one, <laughs> you dress like one. Like th these are all things that we can change with yeah. you, but like, that's why. And so I realized really quick, I'm like, it doesn't matter what you say. She doesn't yeah. even fucking she, think she's listening to you. Yeah. She's not even listening to you half the time, but yeah. she's feeling you. Yeah. Right. And so the vibe. Yeah. It's totally the vibe. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that like you're thinking about girls saying yeah, that? Like, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah, even know what that yeah, means. Yeah, yeah, we do a segment with ladies and they'll be like, 
what do you think guys really wanted you? Well, if the vibe is right, you know, the things might work. I was like, what is the vibe? Yeah. Just how you make her feel, basically. It's, it's a magical, energy. ambiguous yeah. term go, that go. none of them can actually define. But what I've always said is it's basically your ability to calibrate the situation based on ever-evolving facts, based on the interaction that you're having real time with the girl. Yep. That's what it is. But they don't know that because it's like, women don't even know what the fuck they want for lunch, bro. So, you know, it's like, what the hell? Um, so, okay. So, so, so 2014, 2015, you start to see that the dating scene is, is switching up. It's going digital, essentially, you know, with mm-hmm. Instagram and everything else like that. Um, did that make you change your strategy a little bit? Where like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna get out this niche, go into something else, or was it just like you had your girlfriend at the time? What kind of made you get out of it? Yeah, point? I had my girlfriend at the time. Very happy. We've been together eight years now. Congrats, um, man. It was it was that. I just I can't sell stuff that I'm not doing. Okay. I I feel guilty. I can't sleep. I feel incongruent. And in order for me to market, like in order for anyone to be a successful marketer, you need to love your thing more than anyone else in the world. Otherwise, why are they going to? And so if you feel any type of uh, hesitation in what you're selling, how you're marketing, it's going to come through and your sales are going to suck and they're going to suffer. And so I don't want to have to deal with that. And that was part of it. The other part is honestly like Tinder, Instagram, all these apps and shit, they completely changed the dating business landscape as well. True. Because before this stuff came out, like you remember, it was eBooks and courses and seminars. (laughs) Yeah. Where the fuck are those now? Hmm. They're all gone. Yeah. No one's no one's buying dating ebooks anymore. Nah. It's that. And it's also like guys like you and other people like you who are putting this information out there for free. Yeah. That yeah. didn't used to happen either. That's true. That's yeah. true. You would have had to like pay to go to a seminar to get like the secret sauce, you know, totally. or you would have to do an immersion boot camp or something like that back in the day. I think ebooks are more thousand. for like getting your email list up pretty much. Yeah. Here's a free ebook. Yeah. Join the email list. Versus like yeah, people like, you know, buying it or whatever. Ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, in, in 2013, I I had a sixty dollar a month membership, where it was one audio a month. Really, <laughs> for forty five minutes, you got a forty five minute audio. It was good, but it was sixty bucks a month. I had a lot of people in that membership. Mm. There is no way you get away with that today. Yeah, wow, it'd be tough. Yeah, it'd be tough. You'd have to get. You'd have to give way more than just that to get that kind of, uh, I guess, revenue subscription wise. Mm. So, um, so I, I got go a question. Ahead. So, I kind of want to get away from dating, but just, just one more question on that. So, in this case, regarding uh, dating strategies. Regarding skill, right? How important is skill? Because you said you mentioned a quote approach earlier. That's one on one. You go to a girl in person, you may get a phone number, talk 10 girls, maybe 20 girls in a night. That's it. But with social media now, skill is like off the chain because all over the world, Australia, Canada, I don't know, maybe even, even the States here. So, regarding skill, what do you say is the best way to scale in, in terms of dating tra- uh, strategies? Hmm, to scale? Yeah. I, so, if I was single right now, Mm-hmm. Right. And my, my goal was to just get a roster of mm-hmm. women. What would I do? Yeah, because guys, biggest problem I, we've seen is sourcing. Yeah. So there's like, hey, I can't find any girls. Are you talking to any girls? Oh, no. But like, it's hard. It's like, bro, you're not talking to any girls. You're not going to get any girls at all. It's just common sense. But like, in terms of like scaling, what would you say is the best way from your experience back in the day or even now mm. would be social media? It well, 100% it would start with social media, but I'd have a funnel. I, I just think in funnels, right? So like, I would use the Instagram as the preframe, right? To establish myself as like, I'm this cool guy. I do cool shit. Uh, I'm surrounded by a lot of attractive women who are more interested in me than I'm interested in them. Mm-hmm. And I'd create that, that vibe right on Instagram. I, I would honestly, if, if this was just for getting girls, I would buy followers. I'd create the perception of status and social proof and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I would develop connections with promoters in my city. And mm-hmm. I would pick a couple of them who have a lot of hot girls and I'd use the promoter tables. Uh, for more pictures and to invite girls out. And then lastly, this is weird, but I would probably hire a VA uh, to do some type of like outbound or something like that. Like you want to get really tricky virtual with Virtual assistant, you mean, yeah. right? Yeah. For those, yeah. that, for those yeah. that don't know internet language, guys, virtual assistant, listen guys. up. This is very important. Yeah. If, yeah, you, this want, is if you want to get here. really clever with it, you would have your main IG, which is like the preframe. Mm-hmm. And then I'd create a series, <laughs> series of fake IGs with either chicks or like dudes. I don't know, I have to test it. And I have a VA messaging from those pages to girls in my city telling them about me, about my page. So I'd have other people talking about me to these girls to get them out. My whole, my whole game when I was doing it was social circle game. I'd have, I was always friends with the promoter in the city, always. So that was like the most important thing. Mm-hmm. They have access to all the girls that, you know, they control it all. Uh, and then like you'd invite a girl or you'd invite, I don't know, as many girls as possible to the table or to come out with you. They come out with you, you see them in person. And then my whole goal was just a ratio at the table. That was always my thing. I want me, my buddy, the promoter, and as many 20 girls. That's yep. it. Talk to each one, talk to that one. And you just 
you know, you like give them a little here, a little bit, here's a little bit, here's a little bit. And then at the end of the night, you'd have two or three who just wanted to fight over you and come home with you or whatever. And then now you have status. Now they know you this way and you just keep that momentum going. And it became, um, became really easy, man. Yeah. You like are that. on point, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I like that. That's it, like right. leveraging, um, because, because yeah, cold approach, man. Cold approach is fantastic, but it's it's difficult and it's it's very very, very time consuming. But when you have promoters where they're basically refreshing your funnel for you at all times, you can consistently bring girls in. You know, especially were you like doing this in California? I'm assuming or L.A. and Vegas. Awesome. So you got a good influx of like you know girls coming in out of town, tourists as well, and everything like that. Especially Vegas. Goddamn, Vegas and, was. Yeah, I'll yeah. say this: the promoter thing is key because a lot of guys don't understand the power of having a promoter on your side. Yeah, because if you if they're good with you, yeah, you're, you're getting to clothes for free. Yeah, your table for free, and all the girls go to their tables. Yeah, so pretty much you have access to like the king. Because yeah. I'll give the other perspective. I really like that strategy because mm -hmm. um because I'll give the other perspective. When I was you know uh, going out and doing night game and everything like that, I was going in regular. No VIP, waiting cold line. approaching, waiting in line, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Can you still pull girls doing that? Absolutely. But you're going to have to talk to way more girls. I was going yeah. on average one one for 40. You know what I'm saying? One for 30 to 40. Because uh, me, I would just go in. Okay, who's who's interested? Who's not interested? And I would just like screen girls out versus like trying to build attraction with a girl like that was kind of like lukewarm. I would try to find a girl that was very warm and then work on that. Mm -hmm. But I like that strategy as well because you're coming in. From the table point from of the view. table point of view the angle hey so come to my table we yeah. got drinks we got girls here yeah social proof right yeah. there and then it actually saves you a bit of because you're doing a little bit more work up front yeah but it's saving you time in the long run because exactly. the girls are I, I, and tell me what you think about this jason what i've come to realize is like how you meet the girl sometimes is more important than fucking meeting her in the first place Facts. it's like you got to meet her under a certain context sometimes especially if she's more attractive because like some girls like oh you know what, your status isn't there yet. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I only deal with this caliber of guy. Even if you're a good looking guy, it's like, mm. That first impression is huge. Yeah. Yeah. In psychology, they literally call it belief perseverance. Mm. And it's this, when I meet you, I make a first impression of you. And I it, that belief perseveres. I never go back and reevaluate my perception of you. Yeah. Mm. It just stays. Even if I hang out with you nine more times and I get conflicting evidence that goes against my initial impression, I won't change it. Yeah. People don't like changing their beliefs. And, and I'll say this too, because we've done this with tests. Like it's this, this is equivalent. Like, let's say you meet a girl on Tinder versus she finds you like on a sugar site. If she sees you on a sugar site, I've had it before where I match with a girl on Tinder and then she sees me on a same. sugar site. Way more responsive. Same fucking picture, same profile, don't matter. She'll respond more on that sugar site because of the higher perceived status. But you, it's a funny story. It's crazy. It happens to us all the time, right? We'll be yeah. on a sugar site, the girl responds, but on Tinder. So this girl came over, right? From the sugar site, vibing, whatever. And we did our thing. And I said, hey, are you on Tinder? She's like, yeah, I am. But I don't use it as much as well as before. Nope. I'm like, is this you? <laughs> and I sort of the text the message. She's like, I saw you, but I didn't think you were you you were real. I just thought you were <laughs> fake. I'm like, this this girl, bro. Yeah. But on the sugar site, it's like, oh, cool. Let me respond because there's some value there. So yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, it's just amazing how like the context under which you meet a woman sometimes is is critical to the interaction. Whereas like if you flip it with a guy, if you meet a chick. It don't matter if you meet her and she just came out of the gym smelly or whatever, but if she's hot, she's hot. Like guys always look to qualify, girls always look to disqualify, which I always thought was interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, that was the thing I always said was context over content. Mm -hmm. It's it was like and that's why, like you say, it's more like work that. up front. It yeah. is, but it's all about like I don't care what I say. Yeah. I want to make it so I can be a retard. Yeah. And I still accept it. <laughs> Yo. like, that's that's kind of the goal. Yo, Jason. <laughs> I say the dumbest shit to girls, and it doesn't matter. Facts. Dude, corny jokes, that retard. Dude, you, you see my vlogs and yeah, shit, right? Yeah, yeah. I say the dumbest shit, but guess what? Ugly. Fuck you, Chris. Yeah. The point is that, like, the environment's there, and the lifestyle's there. So it doesn't matter what I say. I can say, I can say yo, you like BBC? Oh, I love BBC. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No, and, 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 and I don't think people understand how important what you just said is. Yeah. Um, Dan Blazarian, I remember uh, he did an interview. He's wearing his merch. Uh, is it? Okay. Shout, shout no, out to all saints. Oh, my bad. It is, it, is, it is a goat, though. It yeah. Is a goat. All yeah. sorts of good stuff. Um, So he was doing an interview, and he was saying he turned it into a game where he wanted to see how little he can do to still get girls. And he said he actually banged one girl without speaking one word to her. Like, they just did... <laughs> just, like, sign language, bro. Miming, miming it fucking up. And that's when it hit me. I was like, if you put the work up front... Mm -hmm. You won't have to put as much work on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Which I always thought was very interesting. And and I agree, man. Like if if you do the because it's extremely time consuming if we're gonna go through the, the cold approach route, you know what I'm saying? And versus like just having the funnel built and just organically bringing in the leads. Remember when, when we first met? Yeah, you were like Instagram, nah. But then you see the results, it was like, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was shocked. I was like, cause I was using Instagram as like a 
a verification tool versus mm-hmm. as a sourcing tool. This motherfucker was using it to actually source girls. <laughs> I was using it to verify like I'm a real person. That shit was hilarious. From online dating. <laughs> yeah. You know? So uh, my my first impression of Instagram was I'm not using this. This is stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I built a whole business on it. Like yeah. so I didn't see that. It's funny with Dan though. Like maybe in 14 or 15 when I was still dating coaching, uh, a good friend of mine was one of his best friends, and so mm-hmm. he invited me over a couple times just to like. He, he didn't want coaching. He just wanted, he's like, here's what I do. Like, is there anything you would change? Was kind okay. of like his question. But his fucking question was, I had a party in my house a couple weeks ago. I banged five chicks that night. I want to bang 10 at the next one. This what, is Blazarian? What should I do? This is Blazarian? That's what he asked me. He was, he was like, how do I get 10 in a row? I only got five chicks I banged that night. How do, how do I get 20 more? But you know what it is? You get bored. And you want to see what's the next achievement? Yeah, you can yeah the next crazy shit he could yeah, do. It, so I'm saying God. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's funny because it's it, that like I, I I like to use him as an example all the time when girls say the dumb shit like oh well I don't want a guy that's all over the place blah, blah blah it's fucking cap bro like the social proof the stronger your social proof the less work you got to do on the back end and that's what he was essentially doing like fantastic marketing right like mm-hmm. look at the pictures with me and all these chicks and mm-hmm. next thing you know the girls want to be a part of that so you know it is what it is lifestyle very different from like you know, regular cold approach, right? Where you're like building attraction from scratch. Um, so you also taught um, basketball. Can mm-hmm. you tell the people a little bit about, uh, cause you're one of the OGs on YouTube, like with a basketball mm-hmm. channel. Can you tell them about that? Yeah, man. I, so when I went back to Michigan State University, I stopped playing college basketball. I've started like learning game. Um, and I wanted to make money cause I didn't just not want a normal life. I didn't want a normal job. I didn't know what I would do. And I saw someone, he actually donated and commented here, Elliot yeah. Hulse. Okay. Uh, Shout out to Elliot Holtz. Love you, man. Um, he had a gym when I was at Eckerd that was about a block from Eckerd. That was mm. his, his garage gym. And I started training there in the summer. So I go back to Michigan State. I stay in touch with him and I'm talking a little about this. And he was like, you should write an ebook mm. for basketball. And I was like, what's that? And he like teaches it to me. And he's like, here's what you do. I'm like, all right, cool. I think I could do this. So I launched that. What year is this circa? This is dude. This is uh, so people have an idea. This is like October two thousand nine. And I have a minute right here. Fine. <laughs> oh, the legendary to, uh, Elliot uh, Holtz hey, in the building. Uh, JC is the most. Uh, J- Jason Capital is the most clever kid on, on the, the block. block. He taught me everything I know. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> Shout out to you, man. Master Shout marketer. Out to you, bro. That's the man. Um. Yeah. So he he's the one who like first inspired me. He's like, you should do this. So I launched this ebook on Halloween of that month, and I remember like I'm like I'm set now. Like, I don't know if anyone out there has like launched their first ebook, especially back in the day when it was supposed to be easy. You're like, I'm gonna be rich. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wake up the next day, no sales, nothing happened. Fuck. So it's like a week, nothing happened. So I'm like, all right, this shit's not working. And I got distracted with it. And about four months later, another buddy of mine from Florida was like, yo, there's a seminar. It's called the Underground Online Internet Marketing Seminar. You should go to it. And I was like, how much is it? And he's like, three grand. I'm like, I don't fucking have that. I don't have any money. He's like, there's a scholarship for young entrepreneurs 25 and under. You should apply. Oh, so hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. So I write the thing. Um, week before the event, I'm not selected. I'm like, all right, I guess I didn't win. I get a call that week before the event by this woman, Shanika, who was the coordinator. And she was like, so check it out. There were 10 scholarship winners. You were not one of them. I'm sorry. But number 10 is from Pakistan. Her country won't let her come. You were number 11. Do you want to come? Oh, wow. Sure. Like, fuck yeah, I want to come. Right. Shout so, out to Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not giving women rights. Hey, hey, hey you can't go. Hey, she can, she can be your VA. <laughs> <laughs> she, can be your, she can be your VA, though. Uh, <laughs> I never Yo. I never found it. I should send her a thank you card, man. You should, bro. <laughs> she, she's about to right now. <laughs> Maybe she's watching. Maybe she hates <laughs> you guys. Right, yeah, yeah, she's probably watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> my life is over. <laughs> well, oh, that, could, that could have been me. Shout out to Pakistan. You have no rights. Okay, moving on. Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> so I go and uh, I meet this dude named Craig Ballantyne, who's a OG internet marketer. And he was an online millionaire. He pulls me aside and he's like, I can help you. I'm like, all right, cool. He's like, what do you have? I show him like my basketball website. He's like, this sucks. You need to change this, this, and this. I'm like, okay. But he's like, but if you do these things, you will like, you'll succeed. And I'm like, I'll do it. So I go back to my dorm room. I don't change what he tells me to do. I don't try and outsmart my mentor. I just do what he says. And that first month, that was April, I made 20 G's for my dorm room. Damn. It's fucking lit, man. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. And uh, first thing I did, I took all 20 grand. I went to Craigslist. And I bought an Audi convertible, spent all my money on that. <laughs> and then I put the windows down and the top down and I blasted Rick Ross as loud as it went. <laughs> and I drove really, really slow past every girl's house and all the sorority houses. Okay. Because they had to know. I just needed everyone to know I made money now. Yeah. Oh, wait, what's the what, what song from Rick Ross? Brown paper bag. <laughs> Brown paper <Yeah>. bag. <laughs> I remember these days. Brown paper bag. <laughs> You got it. This, is, this 
is the fucking Lil Wayne era. You know what I'm saying? This is when Wayne was uh, taking over. They were playing the takeover shit. Yeah. By the way, yeah. I'm going Daddy. right now. Rick Ross beard. Yeah, there it's you on go. The way. Yeah. Man. Almost. This is that. They're bringing back memories. This is oh. Wayne was on top. Yeah. Yo, Jeezy was still making music. Uh, Jeez, fucking Khaled yeah. was reuniting. Florida was starting to take over at this point. Ooh, I remember yo, the yeah. passing drove yeah. past every girl's house. White guy. White guy. Fucking Michigan. Oh, shit. Yo, it was two degrees. You hoes are going to see this shit right now. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, bitch. I'm the captain. No. What, man? All right. That's basically it. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yeah. Let's look up some chats real oh, quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, do some what chats. people saying. Hope you guys are enjoying this interview, man. And shout uh, out to the legend in the chat, man, Elliot Hulse. Yeah, yo, yo, uh, yo, hit us up, bro. The people have asked you to come on the show, man. So let, let, ask, asking for us to bring you on. So let us Let's know, do bro. It. Is he, I've heard this funny joke. He's a third loss harsh twin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, man. Hit us up. Uh, hit me up on Unplug Fit or Fresh on Freshman Seal, man. Jason we'll has it. a great story about that wife who gave her husband head every morning. That is a good story. <laughs> All right, so we'll start. So, okay, uh, more Rizzo, right? It's dope to see this. I want to hear that story. It's dope to see this collab. Your channel helped me improve my self uh, confidence immensely since 2015. Shout nice. out to you, bro. Oh, awesome, Jay man. Rudd, America's Honest Dating Coach, finally made it to Fresh and Fit, huh? Yep. There you go. Uh, Amari, watch the fit Jason uh, did with Arm Plug earlier. Fire vid, bro. Shout out to that. It's the homeboy. Shout out to fellow Dan Pena, uh, QLA graduate, Jason Capital. That's from Vaughn B. Okay. Oh, you, nice, man. You did that program too? I did. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Alberto Milan. It goes, Jason, you slide up for the after hours show. No, no most tonight. No after hours show tonight, guys. Uh, we got we got the Patreon call and everything like that. But you you come to Miami fairly often, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. here a lot. Okay. I'm so to come we'll, back we'll bring him on for after hours show, bro. Wait, wait, uh, but he, he, he's wiped up, man. Ah, he don't got to smash the girls that come on. He don't got to smash it. Come on, man. Mr. Simpson, uh, shout out to my Laker. Okay. Uh, red one. Down under, they did not know men have standards. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. Uh, Roberto Moreno. Jason has a great story about the wife who gave her husband head every morning. Yep. We'll talk about that here in a second. All right. Uh, Bob Vance, Vance ref, uh, Refrigeration. Shout out to Office. Okay. Uh, Vance, uh, wait, no, all the business is is marketing and innovation in that order. Peter Drucker, read the greats, my friends. Okay. Mm. Uh, Jason Capital is the man. He's the real deal. Changed my life so much. P.S. Bring the Mohawk back. And that's from Segs. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got uh, Leon VRP. Want to give a shout out to Mo since he's part of the sound quality. Is a, a dime almost every show. Top notch. Shout out to Fort Lauderdale, City of Dreams. Hey, shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. Um, 20 bucks from Elliot Hulse. Oh, yeah. That was from earlier. Shout out to you, Elliot Hulse. Uh, he has a YouTube channel too, guys. I was watching him way back in the day with yeah. the fitness stuff. Legendary. Uh, invite Owen Cook and Julian from RSD, the real uh, G's, to your podcast. That's Owen's from been Lin here Zoo. before. Yeah, Owen's been here before, guys. Yeah. Search uh, Owen Cook and Rolla Tomasi. You're going to see him. We actually brought them together in studio. In studio, man. Only us. Uh, Leon VRP, looks like the camera quality has gone up again. You keep hitting new levels, gentlemen. Angles and camera work are great, too. Shout out to the Fantastic Four. Hey, we ain't fucking around, guys. Uh, yep. D Honey Pack Plug. Hey, guys, question for the uh, question for the guys. Have all y'all spent a night with a chick 10 years older than you? Yep. Yeah, I mean, Facts, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. everyone goes cougar hunting. Yeah. Right it's perfect. But so, Miami, man. Tell yes. us a story about the head every morning. What's this? Dude, it's such a good story. <laughs> all right. So, actually, I have two of them. I'm, I'm yeah. I'll, I'll, okay. So I call it the 365 blowjob story. Right. Yeah. It's basically like one thing I, I learned in dating marketing, which is interesting, is that if we were selling something, the appeal that worked the best was getting head more than getting laid. Mm. Through our, all our data, we found guys would rather get head than get laid, which was super interesting. interesting. Okay. Yeah. I know rappers talk about it. Just give me the head. Yeah. Fuck the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. It's cleaner. Yeah. Safer. Yeah. It's, it's cleaner. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so, anyways, I'd, uh, this is when I lived in Orange County. I was having an after party in my house and there's this girl, she's a hairdresser there and she's talking to my buddy Bryant and they're like, come over, you got to hear the story. I'm like, what's up? So they call me over and she's like, he's like, tell her, tell him. I'm like, all right. So at her salon, there's this like 90 year old woman that comes in every week. Okay. And 90? 90? Nine zero? Like old. God damn. And she has been married to the same guy for like 65 years and they have this amazing relationship together. Okay. And she's always so happy and she's talking about him and every girl in the salon is like, How, what's the secret? How do you guys have this relationship? And she goes, girls, there's two things that I do every morning for the last 65 years. One, I get him a glass of orange juice when he wakes up. And two, I give him head. And that's the secret. With uh, teeth? <laughs> <laughs> because she's naughty. It's like a real I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I probably feel it's different. But like that, <laughs> tell that story to a girl. See what happens. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. It's amazing. I've always said it, and I'm probably going to get hit with the fucking... How dare you? But I, I genuinely think Sorry. women get uh, like, the most pleasure from serving a man, not serving a career, bro. Like You know what I'm saying? It's like, go make a sandwich, bro. It makes you happy. Our boy, uh, Andrew Tate, he says all the time, he'll tell his girl to make coffee in the morning. Yeah. Not one, but two. Just because. <laughs> see what, how's she going to respond to it? Yeah. It works because, hey, 
if she's gonna do coffee for you, what else will she do for you as well? So, mm-hmm. It's compliance builder. Yeah, yeah, bam. There you there go. go. Yeah. Um, I mean, and then I, you had another story too. You said. Well, I mean, there's just a quick one. Like, yeah, yeah. Take your time, bro. Well, just for getting ahead, like, there's any guy out there struggling, can't get his dick sucked. What should he do? Um, one of the best things, I, I just, all the best shit I've ever come up with, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys. You don't plan it; it just happens randomly, moment, right? Yeah. And then you remember it for later, right? And so this was one of those moments where I was, I was in Vegas with this chick. She was from D.C. She worked in politics. She was very, all her energy was above the head, like oh, very of one of those. Yeah. Um, D.C. girl sucks. And she knows she knows I'm a dating coach, and blah blah blah, and. And I was like, you know, like one thing like I've never had with the girls, like I've never had a girl who could like finish me from head. Like I've gotten good head, but I've never had a girl who could make me come. And then it's like changed the subject. And like five minutes later, knows. Mm-hmm. she was like, was that one of your lines? She's like, I keep thinking about that. And I was like, no, like I was just being serious. She was like, okay. And then, you know, she had to got to prove yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's no. good, man. It's so amazing. Like, it's no. like little, little things like yeah. That. <laughs> that's yeah, so literally that's our precious game. <laughs> that's like, bro, a de- no joke, bro. That's that your game every single time. It's, uh, <laughs> that's it. It's good, <laughs> man. No, I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, you know, it's funny. Great minds. I've never came from head before. You're capping. Um, I'm dead serious. Anyhow, so uh, <laughs> no, it works, bro. It does work. Yeah, you put that little great. thing in their yeah. brain because it's you know, then they're like, oh, I'm gonna be the one to do it. You know, like girls like to compete. Keep trying. Well, well they've been invalidated. Yeah, and they don't like that. Yeah, that's the same reason disqualification works and all that different stuff. Yeah, exactly. the invalidation because they're so to, used. I to need it. to feel validated. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. He knows his stuff, man. I, and, I, I, anything else, Chris? <laughs> this is great. Now we go for now. Okay, so cool. oh, so we didn't finish the basketball stuff. So okay, so you so you're on YouTube, uh, the, ebooks, the Rick Ross basketball. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. I'm playing Rick Ross. I mean, it was at that point that I was like, all right, like I'm. I dropped out of college. I started scaling up the basketball thing yep. to like a decent level. I thought like 20 grand a month was like a lot of money for me mm-hmm. back then, and that was all I needed. Within a year, I moved to uh, San Diego, um, and I'm living in a penthouse and gas lamp, and I'm enjoying life. And uh, I uh, I started smoking weed for the first time, mm-hmm. and I never smoked before. And I noticed that the more I smoked, the lower my income went. Until eventually, <laughs> yeah. it was like all weed, no income. Um, and how, I, how, how much money were you making back then? Like 20, 25 grand a month. Oh, it yeah. was just like, and this is 2000, not, not at this point, 2009 10, 2010. 10, 11. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's good. I was for, like 22. For, for a guy at that age, bro. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Especially back then. I so yeah, he was balling. only about 20, 20, uh, probably 20 or I, 21. I, I thought I was balling. And the other thing is when you're that young and you're making even decent money, like more than your parents, let's yeah. say, like you don't have a long-term outlook. You don't yeah. know that you're going to need a lot of assets and things like that in the future. You're just like, I make money now. I need to spend it now. YOLO, right? Yeah. yeah. You have this instant gratification mindset. And so, um, so you I, started smoking weed. I started smoking a lot of weed. I spent it. And within a year and a half, I either, I basically had no money left. And yeah. it was like, either I got a tax bill. It's like, I'm going to pay the tax bill. I'm going to pay my rent. It's oh, got to be one or the other. And so I chose to pay the tax bill. Okay. And I moved back home to my mom's basement. Okay. After everything I've been through. So that was like, a, that was like my low Taxes, point, man. so to speak. Yeah. Well, These bastards. Look at where I live now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm not, making, I'm not making that mistake again. Yeah. How much, how much was your tax bill back then? Back then? Yeah. yeah it was yeah, like that, nothing. That you had to pay. It was like nine grand or something. It was nine, but you couldn't. That, pay, pay. I didn't have fucking money. I spent wow. all of it. I smoked it all the way. Damn. Could, yeah. And, and people get mad at me, bro, because I'm, I'm very, very against, uh, you know, from my background. So I used to work in law enforcement federally. So for us, like weed is just not an option. But I've always told people like, yo. Weed is going to make you lethargic. It's going to make you eat more poorly. It just takes away your ambition. Like, you're not a chick. You can't afford to lose your ambition. And marijuana is like a hindrance, you know? Like, can you still be successful smoke pot? Yes. But why would you give yourself an unnecessary handicap? Right. It's like saying, can I be successful by tying one arm behind my back? Thank you. Maybe, but why do you need to prove it? Yeah. Yeah. And for everyone that says, oh, it helps me do better. Bro, that's you. Yeah. They're an exception. Most people, they get lazy, lethargic. It's like, bro. I posted about it on 420, like, yo, like, I you, saw that. fucking loser, loser. I don't know any guy that's high performing consistently that smokes weed all the time. Like, they, are there exceptions? Of course. But most guys, no. Idiots. Snoop Dogg smokes. Devil's there. Smokes. Joe Rogan smokes. He like, smokes one, yeah, one yeah, blunt on the air. Like, yeah, motherfuckers. Like, yo, you always use. That's like saying, oh, wine is good for your heart. You know what else is good for your heart? Going to the fucking <laughs> gym, you dumb fuck. Like, you, they always want to take a vice and try to, like, justify it somehow. Oh, Antioxidants. Like, yeah, bro. The only thing I could say is if you go about to go to bed and you do it, but even then it's like, bro, why, 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 why man? Yeah. Well, so, it's funny to add to all please, this. Please. I smoke right before bed. Yeah. Okay. I there do. you go. Because <laughs> it does help me sleep. You know, it's funny. Yeah. My roommate Casey used to do that. Yeah. I used to be like, but why? He's just, it's easier to go to sleep. I'm out right away. I sleep the whole night. And like, what I want to do is I want to limit the amount of time I spend during the day when I'm awake high. So mm. I, I don't want to be awake and high. I yeah, want to right. smoke and go right to bed. Yeah, immediately. understandable. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, then I mean, and I've heard this from a lot of entrepreneurs, man. Like the more they smoke, 
it's like the more the money goes down or the more they chase after chicks, the more the money goes down. Like for me, when I was getting the most sex, yeah. I was getting <laughs> making the least money, man. No, imagine if you're broke and you're smoking. Nothing's going up. Stupid. <laughs> just only going down. It's stupid. like, bro, you stupid at that point. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Bro? Like, what the hell, man? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> broke and you smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the thing I noticed with weed, because I, I have a decent experience with it, is it mutes your creative energies is what it does is what i found like that was why i started smoking in the first place is because i was 22 i actually had a parasite um it's called strongyloides i lost like 35 pounds i couldn't go out i could barely eat and so i made this rule this dumb rule myself that i'm not going out to talk to girls until i fix this parasite Mm. so i'm stuck at home in my fucking penthouse in san diego nothing to do bored my roommate smokes i'm like maybe i'll just start smoking and so Uh, i had all this energy i didn't know what to do with it and so smoking just took it all away negated it made it easy for me to be lazy is oh, what okay. it did. Yeah. It gave me it, so it mutes your creative energies. And so, like in the periods I've had where I'm smoking a lot, my creativity is down, my output is down. And when I turn the smoking down, everything goes up. I get yeah. all these good ideas all the time. I'm creating good shit. My marketing is good. It's better. I got okay. a plan. The money you spend on weed, save that motherfucker. Yeah. Go get a mentor yeah. or even even a seminar. Hire Jason. I get a course and learn to make money so you can buy weed later on if you want to. <laughs> but at least have the money because if yeah. you're broke, you're stupid. Yeah, facts. No. Um, so you're at your low point. You're you move back in your mom's house, you're making 20k a month, blasting Rick Ross, hoes in Michigan are oh. loving you. Uh, and now you're in the basement now. Hey, you just paid Uncle Sam, you know. Uh, and you're how'd broke. You, how'd you get into your next venture? Yeah, what happened from there? So I was like, Well, I wasn't playing basketball anymore. And it's the thing I was talking about before, where if it's not congruent, yeah. I can't do it. Gotcha. So I was like, and that was part of the reason my income went down is because I stopped playing ball oh. while I was selling it. It just, it, okay. you got you to gotta live the shit you do. Otherwise, it just does not work for, me, for me. Facts. And so the one thing I was good at was girls. I okay. was still doing that. Okay. Even when I was broke, that didn't matter. Okay. Because you guys know that doesn't fucking matter. And yeah. so um, in that basement, I was like, I'm going to like retool myself and become this big, badass dating coach. That's what mm-hmm. I'm going to do. Because I'd already been taking guys out in college. I'd done it on the side in, in California. Um, it was a part I, of you. What's that? Always. It was always a part it's of It's always been a part of me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I was like, I'm going to productize what I know. Cause before I was getting paid for like these weekend, take two guys out and day game and shit. And I was like, that's awful. Uh, but if I can productize it, I think I can take my, what I know about marketing. I can turn this into products. I can make it a real business. Bam scale. So, uh, I put that all together. I saved up enough money while I was living in that basement to move back out to Santa Monica. And then within nine months of starting that I was a millionaire and I was 24. Sheesh. And it, it all came from dating. Bam. From teaching guys dating. Okay. And you were cold approaching and doing all that. This is that that, that part, right? When you were it was like, all around then. Yeah. And around the, this, yeah. And so now what where are we at? We're at 2015, 16 now at this point? No, this is like 13. 13. 13 okay. okay. 13, 14. And and that's when I was like, all right, I'm gonna go with the online products. I stopped okay. doing the day game shit. Let's just take this shit online. Okay. Um, and that was once I started making a little bit of money, that's when I realized social circle game is where it's at. Bam. Yeah. How, what is one thing you've learned through the whole process of the dating uh industry? that guys always do wrong and they need to change inst- uh, instantly and something that they do right but they just don't believe in, uh, in themselves you'd say hmm. well one thing they always do wrong hmm. is they sit at home like th- like it's such a simple thing but like 90 hmm. percent of the market just sits at home and doesn't do shit. that's facts hmm. but they comment and they talk shit and they you know they got opinions about stuff Reddit. that they've never experienced before in their lives right like I think they need to go out there and collide with reality and get punched in the face a few times and be like, oh, that is bullshit. That doesn't work. Oh, wait, when you have high status or you're pre-selected, that actually does work. Like you can say dumb shit and it still works. Guys who have never been around girls don't believe that. That's so true, man. Until Thank they've you. lived it. <laughs> but it's true. Because like, fresh your cringe. Nick, it doesn't matter what I say. Uh-huh. I'm good. Because uh-huh. I did the work up front to set it up. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes a game at that point. It's funny it's to me. Fun, like, not the game, it's just a game. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. funny. Yeah, and that's the importance of building a funnel, man. Like, having different lead sources, getting your status up. And in today's day and age, man, you know, I say, and you could, I want you to chime in on this as well. I think the dating marketplace is very competitive for men. You have to become the full package now. It's yes. like, you used to be able to get away with just one, like, major, you know, amplifier. Maybe you had status. Maybe you had money. Maybe you were a awesome with verbal game and you're able to talk a girl's panties off or maybe you were just really good at cold approaching whatever it is you had charisma yeah. but like nowadays it's like you have to have everything to be the most attractive to got to most girls because like th- girls have more options than ever before man it's like you have to self-improve nowadays here's what i've noticed right some girls like guys that are in shape some girls like like guys with money some girls like guys that have you know good personality yeah some girls like like guys that have ambition for the most part yeah so it's like if you can cover all these areas guess what 
your dating pool has expanded. Yeah. And now, if you're that guy, one, you don't have to worry about girls coming to you. Yeah. If one is on point, now you win the game because now you're on top. Yeah. And you get the pick of, of the litter. Yeah. So, so what's your thoughts on that, Jason? As far as like the, the yeah. need for self-improvement nowadays, agree, disagree, what's your take? I mean, I completely agree. What, what I used to literally teach, I would draw a triangle. And at the top of the triangle, I would say 1%. Mm. And then the second level was, so it's 1% of guys. Yeah. Second level, 100% of girls. Okay. Beneath that, 99% of guys. And so you Fantastic. have 100% of girls <laughs> trying to get 1% of guys and 99% below them out of the game. Mm. That's, a, that's a great illustration. Because girls will never admit it, but they really are all chasing a very similar habit. I mean, the yeah. reality is women will never be attracted to a man who's lower status than them. It is, it is physically impossible. It will never happen. Yeah. So you have to be above her on the status level in order for, for you to feel attracted, in order for her to feel attracted to you. You're literally doing a disservice if you're not. Yeah. Because Devil's she doesn't get to enjoy the feelings of attraction, which all women enjoy. That was yeah. advocate. But Jason, I know a girl dating a <sighs> bum right now. What's wrong with that? You need to define status, mm. right? Because status to me, it's not necessarily uh, he's got money, he's got cars, he's got watch, that kind of thing. Mm. It's on the hierarchy, where does she perceive him? Like mm. maybe he's a bum, but they have the same social circle. And in that social circle, he's the dude. Mm. Phil, you know? That's a fantastic distinction that people need to, I think, understand well that there are sub hierarchies within the overall hierarchy. Like if you have a group of friends or you have a loose pool of people that you know in your network and you're the top guy in that network even if you're not even really that successful you're still going to be uh, attractive to those girls this is why guys i've noticed like even if they work like low-paying jobs right or they're not like they don't have money like that but let's say they're above a girl that they work with yeah that girl is still going to be attracted to him to some degree could be a manager at a restaurant a lot of them fuck the waitresses why because they have status and it's just it's amazing to see how like a guy like that and then that social circle that little community has a lot more pull Versus if he goes back out into the real world. This is why college athletes like get girls. But then if they were to like put, put them in the Las Vegas strip and no one knows them, they're like, what the fuck? So exactly. The other thing is like, I, I totally lost my train of thought. It was like, if he's a bum, it's what we were talking about before, where how the first impression doesn't go away. So yes. maybe he is a bum, but when they first met, he had somehow, he had situational status above her and she had to qualify herself Great to point. him or invest in him or something. She doesn't go back and reevaluate it. All right. she does is six months later, she's looking at him one night while they're watching fucking Netflix. And she's like, why am I dating this guy? Right? <laughs> yeah. We, we always say, and then she goes to her Instagram to see what else is out there. Facts. We always say on the show, right? How long is she going to do this for? Because it's, it's a time clock. So she might date a bum for now, but it's like, wait, hold on, hold on a second. My girlfriend has a trip to, to Dubai, Bahamas. I'm here at home. We can only, only afford Wendy's. It's like, what the, what yeah. am I doing? Go on Instagram. Like you said earlier, look at her DMs. Hey, I'll fly you out to, to, to California. Uh, month trip, I'll pay your bills. Staying with she, the basketball she, theme, it's a shot clock. She going. The, more, the hotter she is, the shorter the, the shot clock is going to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. You so know what I'm saying? If yeah. she's bad as fuck, it's a 24 seconds NBA, baby. If she's fat, maybe collegiate, 48 seconds. <laughs> just, you know what I'm saying? I think, I, think, I think the important point here for like, especially younger dudes who's in their 20s is like, dude, you need money. Mm -hmm. You just do, like in your 20s, like you need to push, I, I really believe you need to pursue money over women. Yeah, I agree. Like, with 100%. You. And I think like a lot of guys are like, well, what about my purpose in life? I'm like, you need to get rich before you find out your purpose. Bam. Get, let's get you rich first and then we can figure out your purpose. I like that. Because when you're poor, you're not going to be able to do shit. You're just, you're not going to be able to make a fraction of the impact you could when you have money. I That's remember funny. Grant Cardone said this. He, he was like, basically speaking, if you want to be successful, right, you might have a passion or purpose. Who gives a fuck? Focus on the money. When you have the money, then guess what? Your passion and purpose, you can have time to figure it out because when you're broke, you don't have time to figure shit out. You need to make money right now. That's true. You got to live, eat, and feed your family. Yeah. When you're broke, you can't think. You're can't. at the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy. You're just trying to fucking, how do I get food? How do I pay rent? Like, you got to get that shit taken care of first. Yep. That's true, man. That's true. And they said, I think there was a study done uh, like a year or two ago, and they found like 87% of Americans hate their job. Something yeah. crazy like that, which is wild because like you're earning money doing something that you absolutely hate. And I get it. You got to grit your teeth for a bit and do it. Yeah. But the goal is to get out of the rat race, you know, as, as uh, Kiyosaki says, you know, so. Facts. Um, so, okay. So you, so, um, so you, you basically get back in, you become a millionaire uh, with, with the dating stuff. So from that point, how did you transition over into the, the marketing? Did you take that skill set from banging a bunch of chicks over and put it into business or how, how'd you get it? Yeah. Well, I, so I spent like four years just kind of coasting on the dating thing, okay. enjoying it. Okay. Um, I would work an hour or two today from bed just like writing copy in uh -huh. bed. Nice. And then I just fuck around the rest of the day. Okay. Uh, I partied a ton. I put a lot of substances in my body. 
Uh, 2015, I went to Vegas 25 times. Holy shit. Uh, Holy I spent, I spent almost 300 grand that year on partying. <laughs> Wait, was, it, was it a write-off? I'm like trying to do the math. Has it been because there's a there's a statute of limitations. Yeah, it was a write off. Yeah, nice. yeah. Cause, yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, so get this right. Now I'm in a party scene. I'm meeting all these celebrities, all these guys spending money. I'm like, why is this guy throwing 100k at, at a strip club? Like, this makes no sense to me. Like, what what are you doing? But then he was like, yo, taxes. I'm like, taxes? I raised the whole thing off. I'm like, I don't know if that's legal or not. But yeah, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you, so you went 25 times a year. So you were literally going there pretty much every two weeks. You were in Vegas almost every other weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so you were you were there and you were chilling. I was having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just say that. Um. Yeah. So when when did you? Uh. So now what what year are we now here at this point? It's like 15, 16. This is 2015 now. Mm -hmm. So you're making crazy money, chilling in Vegas. Uh. Your courses are doing well. You're selling. What made you say, okay, man, I'm transitioning out of the dating game. I'm gonna get into strictly just marketing. I, I was happy in my relationship. Okay. And mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was tired of the the partying. I was tired. I was tired of the girls. I was tired Rotation, of the drama. All, yeah. Everything. I was done. Yeah. You know, I I cleaned myself out. I was good. I met those needs. I'm I'm satisfied. I yeah. don't like. I'm. When good. did you meet your girl? 2015, 2016. Uh, I met her in 13. Oh, okay. So she was okay. coming with me to Vegas. Oh. We were both having a very good time. Okay. Mm. Yeah. It was fun. Um. Was she was she letting you be yourself and just have fun, do whatever you want? She doesn't let me. I do what I do. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's how, what I like. That's, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was yeah. a trick question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's it's not about like in my relationship, I'm gonna be who I need to be and I'm gonna do what I want. And my dream is the most important thing, and that's gonna be the priority always, you know? And you're along for the ride, and that's awesome, and I love you. But if it ever came between you and my dream, I'm picking my dream. Bam. Because that's what I'm fucking talking about, baby. Right Fuck that go, bitch. Go. Men lead, women follow, bro. <laughs> I've always said it, man. Like, yo, we do not negotiate with terrorists. If I want to fuck other bitches, <laughs> I'm going to fuck other bitches. You can join or you can what, be on the sidelines, but I'm not going to suppress what the fuck Watch I want to do for you. You got a 1% nigga over here, man. Like, yeah, Chris, who, you're right. who picks? Like, you know what I'm saying? I've, like, I've always said it. Like, girls think, oh, well, he's cheating on me, whatever. It's like, bro, beautiful women are common. High yeah. status men are not. You have no leverage. You want a, a winner? Guess what? You're gonna have to share them sexually. Yeah. Fuck out of here, bro. And you know what's funny? Deep down, they know they have to share. Yeah. They'll test you and say, you know what? If I say I'm a, if I leave after this, is he gonna continue his, his path? But if you're set on it and you're following your passion and purpose, she'll just fall into line. Yeah. For the most part. I think she probably likes you even more for that. The fact that you're willing to cut her anytime. Well, <laughs> I mean, like the thing that attracted her to me in the first place, why would I stop doing that when we start dating? Yeah, mm. that doesn't make any sense, and that's a giant mistake a lot of guys make. Yeah, Bam. is they stop doing those things. Yeah, that's uh, what she wants. I uh, a buddy of mine was just telling me his his buddy just got married, and before so his buddy he manages a, a nightclub in Vegas, one of the big ones, and he got married to a bottle girl, and they've been dating for a while, mm. and they're cool, and it's great. They get married. A month later, he's staying at his friend's house. His friend is on a Zoom call, and uh, it's like 11 a.m., and the wife comes downstairs while he's on the Zoom call and starts yelling at him. And she's like, I'm fucking done with this shit. You fucking woke me up. I can't deal with this. I'm fucking leaving. And she didn't know that my buddy was there over here. And she's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm sorry. And she like leaves. My buddy's like, before the wedding, she never, ever would have acted like that. Wow. And then they got married. And all of a sudden, she got mad at him. Check this out. It's 11 a.m. She doesn't have to work anymore. Yeah. We did that for her. 11 a.m. She was sleeping. And people were like cleaning the windows in the bedroom. And it woke her up. And that's what she was pissed about. Oh my fucking what god! The... Hey man, don't get married. Bro. Don't get married. Guys. What, what are your Wait, thoughts she on marriage? Uh, damn, bro. To force, <laughs> Jason. What are your thoughts on marriage, man? Uh, cool for other people. Okay, not for me. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's, it's not a. Yeah. Now I will say this: If we're in Colombia, <clears throat> it don't mean shit. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, as long as you don't involve the state, man. When you got something to lose, bro, marriage is yeah. a bad proposition for Oof. you as a guy, man. God bro, damn. I got. Is he still free. with her to this day? That dude. Yeah. Yeah, they're together still. Fuck. Man. It's probably cheaper to keep her. So I was like, fuck it. Wait, no, but 10 years, you got to pay alimony. So if he stays longer. It depends on what state. Oh. Depends on what state. Damn, bro. Are they in Cali, I'm assuming? Nevada. Kids? No kids. Okay. Depends. All right. Uh, some chats here. Okay. The King, 50 bucks. December 2020 was a long time ago. I continue to profit off the content. Cheers to the Coke and hookers. <laughs> got you, bro. Three pieces on the biscuit. Uh, uh, with more than 30 million cases of herpes per year and over 67% of the world's population with herpes, what would be the best way to approach a female? And that's King Eric the Plumber. Bro, you know everyone has herpes, right? 
Yeah, it's actually on common. some level. Yeah, because if you get a cold story, you pretty much got it. Yeah. Uh, Send tacos. Thanks to Jason's book and YouTube channel. I found you guys and the Rule Zero guys. Hey, shout there out you to you, man. Send tacos. 20 bucks. JC50. Finishing up my listing, opening a mortgage office, already a real estate broker in Cali. And to be a broker, you need to perform and hit certain numbers to even qualify to submit an application. This is because of FNF. Thank you. We got you, bro. There you go. You got to make more money, guys. There's, it's unacceptable to be broke. Uh, Jamal, 10 bucks. Have you heard of Casey Zander? I think he'll be great for the show. Very similar ideology. No, but hey, man, shout out to him, though. Uh, <clears throat> so, okay, so where were we? We were talking about, uh, oh, yeah, oh, Vegas, parting in Vegas. Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Owen had a moment where he kind of figured out, okay, cool. Here's my awakening. I want to go down this path. And he's doing, like, self-development, right? So you said for you, you kind of, like, had the funny partying times. You kind of cleaned out the whole, like, need for that urge. Mm -hmm. And he said, cool, I'm moving on. Was it like a one occurrence that just happened or was it over time you say you know what i'm done with this it was over time okay yeah it was like <sighs> wake up you know you wake up hungover or whatever yeah, just sucks. or just with regret and you're just like i'm just slowly it chisels away at you and you're just like i don't need to be doing this anymore yeah. okay yeah that yeah. was it cool and then so from your experience because i'm realizing now like honestly bro the whole rotation the whole dating stuff it's fun it's exciting but it is like it weighs on you a little bit you feel me mm -hmm. but at the same time from your experience what did you did you learn that saying you know, that a guy could like take from this and say you know what i want to do it but i want to get this out of it at the end of the day what did you learn from that experience being in party life li living the lifestyle all the girls i mean it was good for me to learn like mm -hmm. because like growing up as a, a high school middle school i was not a popular kid I, I got bullied. I got picked on. Uh, all the pretty girls liked my friends. They never liked me. That kind of stuff. And so yeah. I was always like on the outside looking in, being like, "Man, it must be so much better. Like it's probably warmer and cozier. You're happier. Everything's just better there." So I got to taste that, and I got to like go to the buffet and just like consume all of that for me to realize, like, candy store. Oh, yeah, it's whatever. It's not any different than anything else that I've been through, right? So like that was really important because if I'm 33 now and I never had that phase, mm. I would be thinking about it all the time. Now. Yeah, bam. I'd be I'd be on Instagram seeing these girls and I'd be like, oh, I wish I had, yeah, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. I wish, but I've done that, you know? And now I know, I'm like, I know what it is and I know what it isn't. It's okay. Myron has a rule, right? Where he says, a guy should have at least 50 bodies before he gets yeah. serious with a girl. And people are like, oh, that's not fair. That's not cool. But in reality speaking, when you go through a phase of like dating multiple girls, you kind of know what you want. If you don't go through that phase, you don't know what you want. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, that urge is still there no matter what you do. Yeah. My, my argument is like the reason why I tell guys I think they should have 50 bodies because I know girls nowadays are promiscuous to a degree. And my thing is I don't want guys getting into relationships relationships with girls where they're not as experienced as the girl. Because yeah. what's going to happen is you're gonna, you can easily get manipulated Finesse. and you don't understand female nature. And that happens, unfortunately, to a lot of guys. And I say it all the time, is relationship, <clears throat> you take the risk as a man versus the girl. That was, and that, that's another big thing that came out of it is understanding how women work, Bam. right? Like women are wired to meet their needs through men. That's what they do. Mm. I think that's very. Well, can you tell that one more time? One more time, Jackie. <laughs> one more time. This is this is for all the motherfuckers out there, man. I, for the strong, independent women, whatever it is, can you tell that one more time to the people, man? Yeah, and here's the thing: it's not even a hate on her. Yeah, like, like do your thing. If, yeah. if you got a guy out there, you can do it. Right? Yeah. Women are wired to meet their needs through men. Bam. They know what to say. They know what to do. They know what to imply. They do all this shit all the time. You need to be aware of it. You need to like be able to catch the different stuff that they do. Because if you're not, you're done. Yeah, like you're. I, I I know so many guys who are successful in business in the boardroom, but when they go home, their wife owns them. Damn, facts. And it's weird because in the boardroom they can pick out all the stuff people are doing, but they can't see it in their wife. Yeah, that's scary, bro. Yeah, man, it's terrifying. Oof. It's expensive too, because yeah. it usually ends in divorce. Yeah, 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 man. And, and this is what happens, man. If you don't understand female nature, you're you're gonna take an L, guys. Like, and in, in today's day and age. You know, you're not getting virgins anymore, you know, from their dad and shit like that are going to be, you know, shy and timid and, oh, my God, I'll follow you and submit to you. No, bro, you're getting chicks that, quite frankly, have a lot of sexual experience. And if you don't know what you're doing, she's going, you know, dangle the carrot against you. You're not going to understand that she's leveraging sex for compliance or, you know, and you're looking like an idiot and you're doing all this extra shit. It's like, bam, you don't know what the fuck you're doing and you're getting finessed. You're basically going into a, a karate match with a 10 degree black belt and you're like a brown belt. And you're yeah. like, oh, you think you're ready? Yeah, I've, I've done this before. And then you get fucked up. It's like, no. And, and everyone is telling you not to train. Yeah. Bam. Which makes no sense. <laughs> you know what I've really said, yeah, man? Knowing female nature gives you freedom. Because without freedom, yeah. you're finally free because now you can pick and choose. Yeah. And 
you can go into the lion's den, put your hand in, and take it out before you get bit. Yeah. Not, and not only that, it, if, I, I, I say like this type of awareness is important so that you don't hate women, bro. Because Facts. a lot of guys figure this shit out and they're like, I fucking hate these bitches. They're just cool things. Whatever. Not even. Bro, this is female nature. You got to accept it. You know what I'm saying? You can't get mad. Adapt. And I think when I think the biggest thing for guys where sexual frustration comes from in dealing with women, it doesn't necessarily come from the women themselves. It comes from the lack of not knowing why they do the fuckery that they do. Mm -hmm. Like this is why so many guys hurt themselves, get angry because men are used to like, you know, we're, we're taught, hey, invest more. Uh, you know, work on something. Try to understand harder. it. Men since the beginning of time have wanted to figure shit out. That's why we have all these modern conveniences. So many guys, though, can't figure out women. And what happens if I can figure out how to be a scientist and make money and do all this other shit, but I can't figure out women, you're going to feel some type of way. Like, what the fuck? And a lot of guys really struggle with it. Mm. So that's why I've just realized this. I think I think a lot of guys who don't, like if you're at home, like I was talking about the 90% who just come in and stay at home. If you're at yeah. home all the time and you don't have a lot of interactions with women, yeah. then you create an idea of what women are based yes. on what you hear and see on the internet or TV or culture or media that isn't representative of what they actually are in real life. And so when you meet them in real life and you find out that they're not what you thought they were, yeah. that creates a lot of disappointment and no. anger and frustration and all those kinds of things. Like knowing what I know about women, it doesn't make me dislike them. It makes me appreciate them more. It makes me respect them more. I like that they're good at manipulating men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I admire that. I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. It's I, like, if she's manipulating the man, it's his fault. Yeah. She's true. getting away with it. It's him. It's yeah. his fault. That he's not aware that she's doing it. He didn't learn the game beforehand. <sighs> yep. And he's going to learn now. Yeah. And it's going to hurt, but he's at least going to fucking learn. Yeah. Everyone it's in this chat, if you're listening to this now, and you're watching Fresh and Fit, you're watching Jason, even from back in the day, you're aware. That's a blessing because most guys are not aware. Facts. And as a result, they get taken to cleaners. They lose their jobs, maybe even uh, half their house, half their, their assets. And look, lose man, it's, and it's sad. I mean, some guys still are not aware because, you know, they still pay girls money. I mean, and, you know, we'll especially know my now, but I know, I know, I know, I know he's doing it. <laughs> but yeah. Stupid. Okay. So question for you. Mm -hmm. Give us one thing you've learned about su success that they can learn from you in the chat to follow it, kind of emulate to become successful like financially yeah financially bus business wise what thing I'll, you learned? I'll tell you one of the most important things i've ever learned like internalized cool yeah. is that there is no one reality okay mm. i have my reality you have your reality you have your reality we all have there's there's eight billion realities on this planet we are eight billion reality makers okay and when you realize that then all of a sudden what you say or what you say if it triggers me or something like that it doesn't bother me the way it used to because i'm like oh that's his reality and that's cool. And I have my reality and that's cool. And when you realize that life becomes a lot easier. Another way I'll say is what is your reality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, I define it. I learned this from my coach Brent. I define it as four things. It's your thoughts, feelings, your body behaviors, Okay. thoughts, feeling, body behaviors. And right. we just focus on the mental part, thoughts okay. and feelings, right? Yeah. Well, it's impossible for me to know what you think. I might have an idea. Maybe I can influence it, but I don't know what you think. And you don't know what I think. You don't know what I feel. I don't know what you feel. Yeah. So, I can't know your reality. You can't know my reality. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So far. Okay. Yeah. So that means that everything that you say mm -hmm. about me or about the world isn't about me at all. It's about you. Okay. Like everything everyone says to you is about themselves. It's not about you. Okay. And when you realize that someone's like says, oh, you're this or you're that or whatever, you don't have to react to it because you're like, that's just them in their own little reality bubble. It's their thoughts and their feelings. And that's fine. Yeah. But I have my own boundary that's mm -hmm. called my reality. Yeah. And that shit doesn't have to get in. Okay. So <laughs> realizing that for me, uh, it made me a lot more relaxed, a lot more mm. free to be myself with women, with, with anybody. But like that, people get so freaking triggered about everything nowadays. That's true. People are triggered all of the time and they don't even know it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. They, and they, what they do is they bounce in between. They bounce, there's three states that we can be in. There's the adult state, the teen state, and the child state. And what they do is when you're triggered, you go from adult to either teen or child. <laughs> and that you're a teen, a child, a teen, a child, a teen, a child. And so you're in those states, you are emotional. Bam. You're reacting. When you're emotional, when you're reacting, you are not clear and you are not rational. Yep. And so the, your decisions, your thoughts, the things you say are not representative of what you actually believe or want. And you're making your life fucking decisions out of these states. Yeah. And the people wake up 20 years from now and wonder why, you know, this isn't what I wanted at all. Yep. Right. And so I... Uh, like that to me has been the, the most important thing. My coach, who thought his name is Brent Charlton. If you want to check him out on YouTube, he's unbelievable. He was actually, if you, you ever read the book, The Truth by Neil Strauss? I didn't read that book. His follow-up to the game. Okay, I did not read that okay. book. Okay, so he wrote it like 10 years after the game. Okay. And it was about 
his relationship. I've been through the game uh, and it starts with him. He's engaged and he's banging his fiance's best friend at the start of the book. And he's trying to figure out why do I keep doing this? Uh -huh. And he goes on this 300 page journey to try and heal himself and figure all this shit out. The coach that he uses throughout the entire book to help him heal is Brent. Okay. Is my coach now. Um, and he's fucking brilliant. Okay. Uh, absolutely brilliant. But the point is, is like, there's so many, I'm trying to think of like an example for guys here who are listening, but like, if you hear something that like, like women like it when you buy them flowers or you, you take them out to a nice dinner or something like that, mm -hmm. like, okay, that's true for you, but that doesn't have to be true for me. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to like, you don't have to get mad that someone said, I see guys who like on Reddit, they get mad about this stuff. Fuck women and fuck this and, <laughs> and all this. And it's like, why, why are you getting upset? Yeah. That's true for them doesn't have to be true for you you have your own thoughts and your own feelings yeah. the problem is you don't know the difference between their thoughts and your thoughts so yeah. their thoughts trigger you because they just they get right into you yeah you've no boundaries at all that's that's pro that's i like that man i, I really do because the thing is is that people the utmost ration cannot it coexist with the utmost emotion so mm -hmm. if you're going to be emotional, this has to come down with it you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying the the ration the rationality comes down as the emotions go up and vice versa. So it's like, you got to pick one. Like yesterday was a perfect example. We're on this radio show. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, stating some facts, whatever. And they're letting their emotions get the best of them, cutting me off, whatever it is. And they end up looking very foolish in front of their people. Because at that time, it felt good to, oh, you're a misogynistic asshole, blah, 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 all this other That's stuff. Yeah. Long term, you go back and watch the video and you look crazy. And I think people don't begin with the end in mind sometimes. And they just want to go off of how they feel at that moment. And Emotions are fleeting, man. You know, you look at prison, it's filled with a bunch of emotional ass people that made a really bad decision mm -hmm. at a time where if they had exercised some, you know, some Logic. stoicism, they probably would be free right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's facts. Yeah. Uh, but, like real quick, just, just yeah, to please, add please, it, please, like please, about please. The, the woman in Australia, right? Yeah. For instance, and she's yelling, you're misogynist or whatever. What she's unaware of is what she's actually thinking and feeling. Like you don't, for you to get mad, at someone you've never met in real life and they've never met you is absurd. <laughs> that is that is fucking ridiculous. That you're going to get that's triggered true. by someone who's 8,000 miles away. Hmm. That's insane that yeah. you would get triggered by something on a screen. Yeah. Right. She like so when she's like you're a misogynist. What's really happening is there's a thought she feels attacked. There's a thought going inside of her that's reminding her of maybe some guy who who was bad to her in the past or she feels there's something else going on. So when people are like you're this, you're oh. that. They're not talking about you. They're talking about themselves. Bam. And when you realize that, their words, are, they're like, you know, they're like farts in the wind. They don't bother you anymore. They might smell for a second, then they're gone. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say, though, uh, just from, from my experience, yeah. I would say there's one, one reality. However, knowing that reality, I don't get bothered or triggered because I know this is what it is. So I forget my feelings. I forget their feelings. And I say, you know what? Here's the truth. That's just how I think, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I separate the truth and reality. Like, mm. the truth is the truth, regardless of the reality. But I see his perspective, too. Like, it's because mm. you said it's it's your thoughts, feelings, body, body behavior. So you actually control that, right? So that's why, like, but, but it's outside of the truth. But I see where you're going, going too. But, yeah, I mean, you can interpret it differently, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's, but, here's the thing. Like, but those are things that are all under your control, which I like that you, the, yeah. the four things you mentioned are all under completely. your control. They're within yeah. your circle of control. But, like, in the, the one reality, are you saying, for instance, I, uh, there's like, a, I don't know, someone gets in a fight and you're like, all I said was this. And she's like, no, well, you said this, this and this. So she is a different reality than you. And you're like, well, no, I know the truth. I know what I said. Is that what you mean? Or you mean something else? I mean, like, for example, let's say we're here today. Right. And we see someone, let's say, playing basketball. Right. You may say, oh, he's a footballer. No, he's a basketballer. The truth is, like, in reality, he's a basketballer. But you think in your reality, he's a footballer. Mm -hmm. Who's right? Well, I think you're talking about language. We've we've we speak the same language and that mm. what's happening there we represent with the same term, which is playing basketball. Right. Right. I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna say you're right. I, I, I'm I'm separating it like because I know because we always say on our pod like there's yeah. one truth, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're you're appreciate the truth is uh, uh, objective, but your appreciation of the truth is subjective. subjective. So so my thing is like the four things he mentioned, I see, I, I, I'm separating them because the truth is the truth. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have your own reality, whereas like you're, you're the things you control based off of that truth. And he's saying you, you control 
how you feel, your emotions, your behaviors, etc., based on a certain truth or certain based yeah, on the he, truth. He Sorry. can control those factors. Yes, yes. Okay. Versus you can't yeah. necessarily control the truth, right? Like if yeah. I say, "Oh, this guy's blue," I can't control it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus, but I could control that. Hey, I'm indifferent to it. Versus, like I'm triggered by it. Like these girls, like, "Oh, well, uh, guys that make money are gonna fuck bitches. Men are only faithful as their options." That's the <laughs> truth, right? And then it's like girls were like, "What's your decision?" Oh, that's not true. Da It's because their feelings. I know so and so that's yeah. Like they this. bring up that fucking dumbass example. Okay. I, yeah. yeah, I think like truth, like I would just call that fact patterns. Yeah. Like those are fact patterns. Yeah. Like okay. over over an aggregate of a lot of people, guys who are successful are going to sleep with a lot of women. Yeah. Uh, over a large group of people, women are going to be attracted to dominant males. That's just going to happen. That's a fact. Right. Yeah. Those are patterns yeah. that we're going to see. But once in a while, you will get exceptions to those. But, of course. But of those course. are the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. But talking with a million girls, they always want to mention the exception. <laughs> I don't go. That doesn't do that. It's like, oh my god, you're missing the fucking point, bro. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, who cares? It's like one percent, man. But yeah, I think I think uh, I like that because you you control. Right. How you perceive things and how you feel about things well, and like, how so you like, react. Yeah. Like, think about this. Like, a guy is in a relationship with a girl and they're arguing about something mm -hmm. and girls are better at arguing than guys are. They have way more experience than you do. Right. And so she pulls out some stuff on you that makes you feel guilty and triggers you. And all of a sudden you can't think clearly. There you go. And so you lose sight of the argument. And now you end up losing the argument because you were so triggered by it. Yeah. But if you have a strong internal reality, and a boundary. So when she says that thing that would have guilted you before, it just kind of hits the boundary and it falls off and you're able to stay clear um, and focused. And I think that is like that skill to me, I think is the, it is you, you will not succeed in life without that skill, because if you think dealing with women is hard, wait till you start dealing with billionaires, you know, and, and real estate guys who own billions of dollars of real estate. And you're trying to do deals with them or negotiate yeah. with like these guys are tough motherfuckers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like you need to be women should like that's that's where it starts you need to be able to build on that and keep going right yeah I, and in terms of reality like the the truth i believe in is i believe in physics like the laws of physics to me are real everything else i think is negotiable okay right so like gravity is real yep. i think that's verifiable yeah but like you know did he do something wrong did he not do something wrong we could we can talk about that yeah yeah no for sure that's more negotiable okay um Okay, so uh, well, we got, um, where we at here? Okay, 10 bucks, Jamal. Have you heard of, no, right, that one. Uh, we need a Bape FNF collab, maybe like that. Fresh will wear the merch. Have a good weekend, fellas. That's That'd from be hard, Grease though. Junkies do DIY. Uh, is that ITR, I think? Okay, one of the best guests you've had. Thank you, FNF, for creating such a great platform. We got y'all, man. We bring all types of people on, man. Entrepreneurs, yep. uh, dating coaches, uh, other content creators, man. We're trying to bring out the best content. Uh, Lem, Lem Noah. Uh, what's up, Jason? What brand is that hoodie? Looks very dope and comfortable. It's All Saints. Right, all sides. All sides. Uh, they can make good leather jackets too. Uh, said tacos. High IQ conversations with no interruptions. Yeah, absolutely, Thanks. bro. So, um, okay, so we're talking. So, so you're in the dating scene. So and you transition over into business and marketing. What are some things that you would tell people as far as like um, to become successful with marketing? Because it's it's such an important tool, and and it's often like people don't understand like. Like, oh, I went and bought this product. But a lot of the times they don't understand what made them go buy that product. It's yeah. like you enjoy a pizza, but you don't know that guy behind the scenes was spinning that dough. He's putting out a certain water temperature. He's using different types of water. Mm -hmm. He's putting a certain sauce on it. They don't really know uh, what how goes, the process what works. Goes into it. You know, but they just enjoy the end product. Yeah. You know, so, which is how women operate, too, because, like, they don't know the adversity you went through to become that attractive man. They just enjoy the end product. Lifestyle. So uh, if we're going to, you know, reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. What is successful marketing? Uh, successful marketing is ideas. Bam. It's what okay. it comes down to is big ideas. That's the whole thing. I, I teach, I train a lot of copywriters, specifically Facebook, Google ads, long form sales letters, VSLs, webinars, email copy, social media copy, et cetera. Um, and they always think, what's the template? What's the magic word I can say? Which can you is tell ironic. people real quick what is copy? Because we have a lot of people that might not be internet marketers watching. What, can you tell them what copy is? Sure. So copywriting is words that get money. It's the words you use. There we get it. Uh, <laughs> Messed up. Uh, it's the words you use that persuade people to take action or buy things. It's the words, right? That's it's that's what it is. And so, uh, it's about ideas. Like like they always want to know what's the magic way to start the video or what's the perfect headline or the perfect ad or whatever. And it doesn't exist. It's the same thing that I had seven years ago when I was dating coaching and guys would be like, "What's the magic line to get the girl?" Pick up line. They want the same thing. It's just it's, it's ironic. I just see this pattern across all these different. Uh, industries that it's the same psychology, the same insecurity that wants to know what's just the magic word, the magic thing I can do that I get me what I want when it doesn't exist. Like with dating, the magic appeal that's sold to guys, which shouldn't because it's bullshit is innocent words that turn around that sold better than any appeal in the history of the dating industry mm. by far. 
why, why would that be such a good appeal? Because it means you can't get rejected. Because if it's innocent words, she doesn't know you're saying them or doing them. So if it works, you win. And if it doesn't work, she's none the wiser. Mm. And so the guys wanted that, right? And so um, the, the point, is, I'll get back to the main thing. It's about ideas. That's yeah. what marketing, it's about big ideas. And so uh, after you get the idea down, the, the other thing that I think is just really interesting is really good marketing is about having a really good central thesis and a mechanism. And I don't want to get too like IQ and heady here, but like, I'll give you an example. Um, and I'll give a dating example, because I think that'll be perfect. I have a buddy of mine who had a dating offer that absolutely crushed for many, many years. Uh, and his thesis behind his offer was this. 90% of the time, if you approach a girl, she thinks that you're desperate and she rejects you. But 90% of the time, if you get her to approach you, you can lay back and play it cool and she's yours, right? And most guys believe that because it is actually true. And so if you believe that, now all you want to know is what? How do I make her approach you? Well, that's why you buy the product because that's what the product shows you to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I got to figure out what is the one belief that if I get you to believe, like the 90% thing, if I get you to believe that, you want my product. That's it. And so that's marketing is figuring out what is that thesis, that one belief I need to get you to believe so that if you believe it, you'll inherently want to buy my thing, whatever the hell it is. I like that. So I spend, I spend weeks just figuring out the thesis. And once I have that, the rest of the shit is, is easy. I like wow. that. Yeah. The foundation. And, and, and you're essentially, cause, cause let's be honest, a lot of guys are scared of uh, um, rejection, right? So if you're able to create something that lets guys make a move without necessarily telegraphing too much interest, so they have plausible deniability is going to be great because you're, you're solving a problem and a pain point, which is how do I avoid feeling this pain from rejection by girls? Because a lot of guys are li literally like get frozen around women. Like, I don't want to get rejected. You know, it's like a it's like a how do I say this? like a carnal instinct in human beings to not want to be rejected because, you know, mm -hmm. we're tribe. We're we're designed to be in tribes. So, right. Like 100,000 years ago, you talk to the wrong girl. Some K-man dude is coming with a stick. He's going to beat the fuck out of you. Facts. That's his woman. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so that's still there. Um, so, yeah. So that like that's what another example, of like the, the central thesis thing is there's this this pill that sold super well in the 90s and it was a shark cartilage pill why the fuck would anyone buy a shark it's a supplement hmm. right okay and they use marketing and what they did was they said sharks don't get cancer which is true <laughs> sharks don't get cancer right and if you believe that this is the intelligence of the masses if you believe that then you just need the one thing or whatever sharks have that make them not get cancer and it's shark cartilage because they have super <laughs> high levels of shark cartilage and so that's what the pill was. And this thing made tens of millions of dollars based on that idea. Sounds so, like the 90s. So I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> OJ it's, also walked in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> so you find out their why. And then when you find out their why, they ask you how. Like, it's like, why would they want to buy that? Okay, cool. Right. Well, you don't, they come in wanting not to get cancer, right? No one wants to get cancer. Yeah. So I know that desire is already there, that fear of dying, right? So they want to know, how do I actually... How is that possible? I'm not claiming anyone at home that there's a cure to cancer because there's not. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But like sharks don't get cancer. That's true. And if you believe that, like really believe that, and you believe there's some connection into like the shark cartilage thing, yeah. you're going to want the supplement. That's true. This happens everywhere. You don't realize it, but it's happening everywhere. Like look at every Budweiser commercial. The thesis they show is like drinking this gets you girls. Yeah. Right. Like every beer yeah, yeah. commercial, it's like I get a drink and then this pretty girl comes over to me and it's super easy. Yep. <laughs> Anyone at home has that ever happened to you? Never happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. You're hitting it. Sit at your house. Open it. All right. Where's the bitches? <laughs> I <laughs> opened this thing. <laughs> Actually, it has happened to you. What happens is you open up that Bowe that Bowweiser, pop it open, icy cold, take a sip. She's like, excuse me. You have a lighter? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Worst know comedian it. ever, bro. I was trying, bro. I was trying, <laughs> trying, funny, bro. I was trying man. Like trash, bro. Okay. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, 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 don't quit your day job, man. Uh, okay, let, let, let me know. Uh, uh, sub Jason, what brand is it? Oh, no, read that one. Okay, hi. Conversations. Okay, last thoughts. You can tell the after hours is going to be uh, good. Hope we have chill ladies on the panel tonight. Not tonight, guys. Not no tonight. after hours. But I'll tell you, I'll Zoom tell you what. We will have Jason back on an after hour show with some chicks. So don't worry. That'd be dope. Uh, oh. Neil Stewart. Curveball question for Jason. In string theory, what are strings made up of? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Yeah. Know what the hell. <laughs> the okay. Venom, don't. 50 bucks. Being aware of other perspectives are key to people can look up in the sky and I, and one will say the sky is blue and the other one will say the sky is orange. The guy that said the sky is orange is colorblind. So they are both right from their perspective. Okay. I get what you're saying. Uh, Mike Anthony, uh, my question, I have 15,000 cash today. How could I invest it and get some type of a return within 30 days, like a short term investment? What do you think about cryptocurrency and, or other avenues? I mean, I'm in real estate, guys. I have cryptocurrency as well. But um, 
the big thing is you just got to park your money somewhere where it's not going to lose value. What's your take on that, Jason? Yeah. I think it's, Mike, I think it's a little scary that like you've, you got this cash and you're just immediately looking for like a quick, yeah. uh, a quick return. Yeah. That, usually, that doesn't end very well. That's also, I'm, the mindset. I'm in real estate too. That's, okay. that's awesome. my vehicle. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So there you go, man. But, and real estate's made more millionaires, guys. There's like, than anything, well, Bitcoin's been doing it pretty well too. But in general, 90 plus percent of millionaires, guys, have real estate. And do you buy and hold or do you flip? Do you wholesale? How, you, how do you? Uh, what I've done so far is has just been buying and holding for a little bit and then flipping. Um, okay. I'm getting into apartments. That's kind of my next move right now. Nice. So I'm, I'm selling my place where I live right now I uh, because the real estate market just went bananas the last year and a half. And Is it a good time to sell? Yeah, I mean, I'm I bought it for four point six, and I'm gonna sell okay. it for like fifteen and a half. Nice. Is this Whoa. like a yeah. complex? What's that? Is it like an apartment a complex? It's a condo. It's a oh a condo. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Yeah. What, what like what, was it like a fucking like a huge con like a, what, like yeah. a like uh, a villa or something like that? It, it's a it's a dope condo on the beach. Is there. it a whole, okay. Is it a floor? Like you you own the floor? No, it's one condo. Holy crap! And that's that's like mid market for the like. There's a condo right next to me that just sold for twenty. And this is in California, in Puerto Rico, in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you have to remember that there's there's okay. the real estate in Puerto Rico, but then there's also all the other incentives that go with it. I just remember that area is very is very um what's the word high net worth. So guys that live there, yeah, on some level are either Amer out of state, they're not from Puerto when Rico. I, when I moved there, yeah, I felt poor and I felt stupid, and that was the best place for me to be. Is Bam. That, <laughs> isn't that close to where Logan Paul? He lives in my neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like dude, that area, bro. Okay, man. You, I mean, the, the guys who like like the twenty million dollar one that was just like a private equity guy from New York who just wrote a check. Like that's nothing to them. Yeah, yeah. 20, it was a check, it's just cash. They're all cash buyers. And and you bought it. You said four four point four point six. Uh, you bought it for four point six, and you're gonna basically trip over triple your. That's fantastic, man, bro. In in eighteen months. That's oh, you've only had it for eighteen months. Wow. I don't like. I don't. I'm not. I, I don't believe it. I sound smart. I was hundred percent luck. Just luck. But Amen. here's the thing, though, it's because that area, you can't live there unless you're a high net worth individual in the first place. So it's like, you know, you can sell it for that because people that are going to buy in that area are going to Puerto Rico for a specific reason to save money yeah. so like, on taxes. So like if that guy, high net worth a, people. if he's got an $80 million tax bill coming up or something, yeah, paying a little bit extra for a condo to not pay that bill. Yeah, that makes sense. 100%. Yeah. So if, if you see someone out there that's an influencer or whatever, they're there because they have a lot of money, a.k.a. Not trying to get destroyed by taxes, so that's that's great. But yeah, man, fifteen grand, bro. Investments are something that's long term, bro. It, like, there's no short term solution to long term problems, bro. Guys. I would say, I but like get that. get more money, bro, because fifteen thousand dollars, bro, is not a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, you could get into a, a prop, bro. You know what? Fifteen k FHA loan, baby. Get yourself into a duplex, triplex. You know, fifteen grand will get you be able to get you in something decent, depending on where you live, and uh, live on one side, rent out the other, man, and then do that for a year, get the fuck out, and then put a tenant in there. And bam, yeah, uh, just homie don't, clicks. Just, just don't be house poor because, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. make sure you have some goddamn reserves. Yep, homie clicks. I came in late, guys. How are you doing? Nash, no, fresh merch, Nani. Okay, <laughs> and then last one, Neil Stewart. Jason, what's the thesis behind the Amazon website? Oh, good question. Mm. Well, it, that is a good question. That is a very good I question. Think Jeff Bezos's goal when he started it was everything, <clears throat> right? It's the everything store, so it's convenience, is what they sell on. Like 100%. It's convenience. And then when you, the, the thesis really comes into play when you talk about Amazon Prime. There you go. Because if I get someone paying a monthly uh, membership for free shipping or two day shipping or whatever it is, you feel like you need to shop at my store instead of the competitor because you're already paying me a little bit. You have a little bit of investment, a little yeah. bit of compliance. Yeah. Right. And so that, like Amazon really took off when they introduced Prime. That was yeah. kind of the force multiplier. And, and, and also, like if you use their interface, they, they, they handle so many objections up front. Like, you don't have to like one of the most annoying thing for a lot of people is like putting in your credit card information. Mm -hmm. Like they just have a little button that says slide this and it's going to come to you. It's crazy. Like they've made it so easy and so uh, smooth getting rid of the cumbersomeness mm -hmm. and bam, that, that, that's why you make more sales. And I agree with you. If you're a prime member, you're going to be far more likely to shop there. And then let's say you have an Amazon card, 5% cash back on, on Amazon purchases. Bam. Now I got you for life. You ain't going to go nowhere else except Amazon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. It's it, like a big thing. In internet marketing also is like, lowering the number of clicks that it takes someone yes. to do yeah. anything mm -hmm. and amazon does that better than any company i've ever seen Damn. like like the what is it you can put you can search for something and then it's buy now and it's, yeah 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 and you like slide click. a buy thing now. yeah 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 like you slide it buy now or whatever and it's crazy it's right there ease of so, access yeah um all right okay all right. Well, so, any chats nope so okay. jason where do people find you man uh ig find me on ig i'm back on now
Bam. Yeah, so just at Jason Capital. Right here. At Jason Capital. Um, and then if people want to like get coaching from you, man, as far as like on marketing or anything like that, can you tell us a little bit about like your services real fast before we close out? Uh, I can. Um, at the moment, I'm not. I don't do any coaching for, no, no, for okay. consumers and stuff. Right too now. busy, guys. Yeah, hmm. uh, I'm not doing any of that right now. I may in the future. Right now, I'm focusing on training like companies and, and corporate companies and stuff. So we train their marketing teams. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, my, my whole thing is like send them to me, and I'll send them back profit makers. That's kind of the idea. Bam. Mm -hmm. So if you if someone's like a CEO or as a, a team or something like that, they can hit me up and we can talk about it. Bam. Yeah. Bam. Big deals only, guys. <laughs> uh, and th that's all his uh, socials right there, man. Boom. Um, Boom. And Jason, any last words for the people, man? Anything you want to tell them? Or? Dude, I just want to say to you guys, I'm fucking impressed as shit with the setup that you guys have here. This is fucking incredible. It shows like a Thanks, serious man. level of commitment to your craft. Thank um, you, man. I'm super impressed with what you guys have done with the show in 18 months only. It's freaking awesome. And I wish you guys all the goddamn best in the future. Oh, man. Thank you, man. Thanks, it won't bro. be the last time. We're going to bring you back, bro. Like sure. I said, we need to bring you here with some chicks and then also hysterical and maybe do a part two on, on mastering marketing or something like that. Bam. You know, and more any, in depth. Yeah. Cause I, I've known about Jason for a while, man. He's friends with, uh, with Brandon. Uh, I told you before the show, uh, when I first got into the digital marketing space, my copywriter was actually coached by you. So, uh, shout out to Logan. And yeah, man, I mean, you're a legend on the internet, man. You've been here for a while, so it's, it's been great and to have you on here. the show. He's yeah. still here. That's, That's the fire. big thing. He's still here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, guys, awesome. go check him out on YouTube, man. Go check him out on Instagram. Uh, one of the best marketers out there, man. Thank you for coming on the show, Jason. It's been awesome, man. Added massive Appreciate value it, tonight. Yeah, yes. Very good fire content. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll see you guys back in a little bit with, uh, with a call-in call show. show. So get ready. We'll see you guys in a bit. Peace. Peace.